Well, what a topsy-turvy start to the season that has been. Uh, it's nice when you can't score a goal in four games. Hopefully today, we'll score at least once. That'd be nice, wouldn't it? As always, if you have been enjoying the series up to this point, do drop the like on that. That would be super duper lovely and all that jazz. Now, I thought I'd turn our attention to something a little bit different to start things off today, because I think this is quite important to note, and that is this. This is the wage salary per annum spending for the clubs in the Alsvenskan right now. Now, incredibly, we actually are no longer at the bottom on that one, which is ironic, considering we were the 10th highest spenders in the second tier last year. So the board clearly did actually back us going into this season by pretty much doubling our wage budget, and it does move us to 15th, uh, only just ahead of GIF Sundsvall, who of course find themselves, well, dead bottom of the league. So that's something as well. And that's what we're going to have to hope that he can do today against GIF. We're at home. This is a winnable game as we're going to get all season at home against the bottom club who've not won in their first 10 league matches this season. Uh, and I think Elsborg have won a game, but they've lost their other nine. So those two seem to be the pure whipping boys of the division this season. Them and Varbergs. Luckily, we've beaten all three of them, which is kind of good. I think we've actually beaten all of the bottom four this season, but we could get a win here. It would really do a good one to boost our confidence, get that morale back up and just be nice to see us score a goal, eh? I often remember what that feels like. Oh, those were halcyon days. Tiredness is definitely a factor, and I think we might well be losing Nikolai Linger uh, for this one. Now, this is the last midweek game we have this season. After this, it's all smooth sailing as far as just Saturday fixtures, so that should help us on the fitness levels. But, oh god, this is not a game that we could have done with right now midweek. I wanted this to be in a position where we could really go after it. Now, for the most part, the team is actually in a good shot, good shape, except for Nikolai Linger. He picked up a slight knock in training in the midweek, and I get the feeling that we might have to bring in Ludwig Svanberg, which is not ideal when Linger is such a threat and just a brilliant giant at the back for us. You might also notice that Lonvike has had a bit of a struggling period, and that's unusual for our back line, so hopefully he can sort himself out as well. But we also need Panache, uh, now that he'll be back in the side today, to get his act together as well. Hopefully sitting out for a game, him being perfectly fresh here, you know, a game against the bottom club, this is the perfect opportunity for him to show us what he can do and get back into scoring. It does, however, though, very much feel as if we are making the groundwork now for a reliable tactic that we can use from team to team. I think we've definitely come a long way, and now we seem like a much more stable opposition to other teams. And the quality of football on display this season has been pretty good in places, but we just need to turn this little rut around. No goal in four. And admittedly, the no goal in four thing is somewhat of a misnomer. It's not like we haven't created chances in those four games. Ironically, I think we could have probably had three or four goals in those four games, but it's just how these things go. Uh, once you let the finger off the end of the hose, hopefully we can sprout back into action because we are underperforming our XG this season a little bit. Uh, no surprises there. How okay they've looked in this game so far. This is a good chance for Rothman. Oh, wide of the post. That could have been in. Bengtsson to Panache. Kendall. There's the ball. There's Panache. He's in behind. This is his chance to prove himself. And he's had his shot well saved, but these are chances that must be taken. A goal before half time here could really spark a fire, hopefully, and get that confidence going. Kvi scored. Drops it in. Panache's head us well saved again by the goalkeeper. I mean, I think of the two sides, we've probably edged the first half, but we're not looking like a team that we... We're not looking like the team that we looked earlier in this season. Uh... That's the simple fact of the matter is that's the case. Bengtsson, he could drop this short or maybe just go for the cross this time, whips it short, and it's a foul! And, well, hang on a minute. Nope, we can't. It's going to have to be Asari. He wins the penalty. He's having a chance to take it since our normal penalty taker is not on the pitch. Asari, I think, has missed a penalty for us, or someone else did last season. That might have been last season, actually. Asari from the spot drills it home, and it's 1-0 to Degafors. Our opponents have offered really nothing in this match for the most part, so our, our lead right now is certainly a deserved one, but... We can't afford to let it slip. Wow, the look at the space. Where's Lindell? Oh, I think he's just too tired. I'm going to move Engfist into the ball in a midfield row, so at least he can track people back a little bit more with his more energy off the bench. And we'll move Torstensen into the box-to-box -box role. Oh, hello. Asari's rolled the defender. Can it be two now? Oh, Kofi. Beautiful. Kofi Asari off the bench with a brace. And I tell you what, Panache has got to be worrying about his place in the squad. A little bit of confidence with that penalty goal. And all of a sudden, he's burst into life there. He just rolls the centre-back. A little bit too easily, for, for surely, for their managers liking it. But once he's passed him, he is gone. But the presence of mind to go for the little dink here, that's a man with a little bit of confidence in his game. And all of a sudden, it's 2-0 to Degafors, and what on earth were we worried about? In the end, it actually looks very comfortable on the night. 2-0 victory, comfortably in control on most of the stats for the game. It just took us a long time to get that little bit of a breakthrough, but I'm just so happy that we scored a goal from open play. And there we go, Degafors 2, Sundsvall 0, a team we couldn't beat last year. Oh no, we did beat 3-0, didn't we? But never mind, we've got the result, and that is massive, because confidence is going to be rife for throughout the squad. Plus, that's also 
three consecutive clean sheets for the back line. So that's a good thing. Just get the strikers going a little bit, eh? That is exactly what we needed. It keeps us in fifth place, but it also moves us nicely clear of those. Sort of, we're in a good position right now. 11 games in and 21 points on the board is spectacular. Still 15 points clear of Varbos, which is the main thing, and keeping those teams mudded down towards the bottom. And it's just a case of just seeing how many games we can win and just how high we can finish. The record, I believe, is eighth. I think that will be very tough for us. But you never know, hey? You never know. After the Sunsfall game, Kali made his way to the agreed meeting point with Astrid. Once he arrived, she immediately jumped in the car and told him to drive. She handed him a USB drive containing notes she'd managed to cobble together as some of the things Henrik had told her while they were in captivity. She made Callie promise not to open the files until the 1st of November. She still showed signs of injuries endured during her ordeal. As she was getting out of the car, she turned to him and stated, Henrik is not who you think he is before walking off into the night. Piotr out wide. It's just before half time. It's been a very even first half, which is impressive for us, but Piotr skinned off. Oh, he slipped it all the way through it. Oh, so close. The goalkeeper makes a brilliant save, but on the rebound, Maxwell puts it over the line and Kalmar have the lead. Such an even game and it's a bit unlucky from us, really. There, great save initially. Machino drops it short. Oh, it's deflected and Granat's fouled his man and now it's a penalty to Kalmar and surely this is game over. Came off the bench to replace some tired legs, but now Maxwell has the chance for 2-0 to Kalmar and it should be straightforward and it is. It's 2-0 and it's game over. If you just pop one across or something, Angeleri getting forward, back to Granat. She needs to whip this across the box, really. And now he has. And Panache has scored. Such an important goal. It doesn't matter in the means of the game. But just having Panache score a goal right now is what matters. In the end, it doesn't matter as we do lose by two goals to nil. It's a very weird game, really. That In the sense that Kalmar only really had two actual chances in this match, to be honest. Which was the, the one over the line here, which basically was, as, was literally one XG from that one chance. Because it was basically on the goal line. And the penalty... Oh, if we just hadn't considered that damn penalty, we might have grabbed a point here. I don't think it was as bad as it looks, honestly. And just having Panache scoring a goal, <laughs> that alone is important, man. We stay fifth in the league, incredibly. So no harm done on that one, really. Uh, Sundsvall do finally get their first win in the top flight against Helsingborg, of all people, uh, which is surprising. But there you go. Uh, Elfsborg still uh, only one win in 11. No, 12. Just had a word with squad about his performances over the last few matches, and now he's going to be out for the next match. He won't miss any more than that. And we actually have a nice month off, which might allow us to get Abdul Halik Hudu back for the Malma game. But still, it looks like Asara is going to have to play this role next game. It's going to be a tough match against Jules Gordon, and I don't think it's going to get any easier today as Lofgren's header is flicked in by Davy Gabriel, and within three minutes, we already trail the champions. Samsted scoops it in. Davy Gabriel's header off the post on the rebound, and he's put it over the line. It belts back to him perfectly, and it's 2-0 now to the champions. Solzite goes near post again. Linger off the header, and it's Jules Gordon 2. Degerforce 1. We're backing it through Linger. We've had chances, though. We've missed two really good opportunities in this game. Nice movement. Can he find the right pass? though. That's the key. Granat. Round the side for Enkvist. Out wide for Lindell. It's it off the crossbar and it's Joe Gordon 2. Daggerforce 2. Eric Lindell's first goal of the season. What a hit that was from the man. And now with 15 minutes to go, we're level at the champions. That is huge. And the thing is, I... What I will say is that we did not deserve anything from this match. I think Jules Gordon were the better side, and they definitely deserve to grab the win. We took our chances when they were there, but we also had two great chances. That Panache one that hits the post, and the Kofi Sari one when he goes through on goal as well. Ironically, not where the goals came from, but the chances were there. Uh, we didn't see much of the Jules Gordon chances, but nevertheless, two all against the champions away from home. Huge result. Ecstatic for the guys at getting a point that we didn't expect to get. It was tough games against Kalmar and Jules Gordon there. Those were good you know, I think we played well in both games to an extent. And to grab that extra point there is going to help very much later in the season, I expect. Particularly as it's Malmo next. So the run doesn't get any easy, but we've got a month off now. But hopefully, Hoodoo will be back. Panache's contract is up at the end of the season. And I'm going to try and get him. I know that he's had a hit and miss season. I just trust that there's a good player in here. And I believe that there is. 1.4k a week is the lowest end of that. And it's less, that's basically what he's on now with us. So that's fine. And a three-year deal. I still think there's a player here. Due to a weird quirk in the way that loans work... Kvitskord has left now because his loan has finished with from Esbia. But he doesn't join us until the 30th of June. Youth intake preview. Average youth intake. Funny, this average youth intake seems to have more A and B players in it than our so-called golden generation did last year. Top prospect in the central midfield, a forward who can be considered a fine prospect, and a promising centre-back. Okay, so Hoodoo's back in training. Uh, but now Nigel's disappearing off to the CONCACAF Gold Cup with Suriname. Angeleri's just twisted his ankle in a friendly... We were playing a few friendlies just to keep the match fitness up over this period of a month without a game. And we nearly got through the whole thing without a single tiny knock, other than maybe the little knocks we had in training here. Thank God Hoodoo's back, because Angeleri's going to be out for a while. Going all the way in, don't foul him. Oh, this is a good chance for him to shoot. Blocked again. 
But for Colin, no, oh, it's in off the crossbar. Malmo have just been taking pop shots from range all day. Very few of them have been dangerous, but that one from Colander is an absolute thunder strike. Peña, edge of the box. That surely cut. What? What the hell was that? It's a goal, apparently, for Malmo. I've got to be honest, I'm a little disappointed in the scoreline there. I actually think we've put a pretty bloody good performance in there at home against Malmo and have not really got what we deserved out of it, but it is what it is. The last game, I think, was a point we perhaps didn't deserve, so it kind of swings and roundabouts, I guess, but... Ah, oh dear. I think we should have scored in this game. That's for sure. And that second goal was so strange. We slipped to sixth. Or I think, yeah, slipped to sixth in the league. 22 points on the ball. Still still sitting comfortable. But uh, as you can see, three points still off of the European places. So it certainly ain't the end of the world. We've just come through a really tough stretch of matches uh, against the likes of, well, Malmö, Jules Gordon and Kalmar. The three teams that are pretty much directly above us this season. So that's certainly something to uh, consider. And hopefully once we come up against some better, some slightly easier games, maybe there's a chance for us there. This guy's thing said 30th of June as his contract was expiring before. And now it says he's not joining us until the 15th of July. So we're actually going to lose him for an entire month. Just tried to offer Belmin uh, Jenshiradzic, uh, a goalkeeper that I think I might have showed you in the transfer episode. He joined a different club in Denmark in the end, but his contract's out at the end of the season. I just tried to offer him a deal. Remember, he was willing to talk to us before when we were a newly promoted side. He believes Degerforge's performance in the league is concerning. We're sixth in the league, you mug. We, we were just promoted and we're sixth in the league, and that's concerning. That was a bit of a worrying decision. I thought he was going to get it back on his right and go for it. Svanberg's header is it's in! Ludwig Svanberg, and it's 1-0 to Degaforge against top of the league BK Hecken. I don't know what, where that's come from or how, but Svanberg has given us the lead. What a win. Degaforge 1, BK Hecken 0. Makes up for the Malmo result, for sure. What a performance at home against top of the league. Lucas Svanberg's goal gives us the win, but Panache had some chances in this match again, and he's fluffed them both. We had no choice with him up front today at all. But nevertheless, we get a massive victory and a clean sheet to go with it. That's that's huge. Actually doesn't move us up the league in any way, but it keeps us nicely consolidated in sixth place and moves us... Well, we're actually still only 16 points clear of the relegation zone, but we're still pretty far clear of that one. As Sundsvall uh, actually pick up another victory away from home and have moved into the uh, well the non-relegation spot, sort of. Just notice this guy, Musa Kante at Dakre Sucre Kur, a team, obviously he's not a region, that were notorious for producing outrageous youth prospects on my Africa save. He's available, not for free. Ironically, if we try to sign him, it'll cost 300 grand. But if we can get him now for 50k, we just need to get in there quick because I'm seeing a lot I like about this guy as a midfielder. Arsenal just signed someone called Vieira for 57 million pounds. I guess they have a type. Lindell does need some support. He's got a Sare with the support now. Here's the run. Panache in behind. Big chance for Panache. Goes around the goalkeeper and he scores. And that is textbook Panache Mutin Banyoko right when we needed that confidence against a team like Elspor. This is big for him as we play Norshipping next. Good chance for a bit of confidence. Ball in. Panache on the end of it, and now he's found his mojo again. Degaforge 2, Elsborg 0, Panache and Mutin Banyoka with both goals. Come on, lad. Uh, he's had two great chances since he got onto two goals, and he really should have scored one of them at least. And now we've been dispossessed here by Nordstrom. And now Linger's going to get a red card for no reason. Just pass the ball, you mug. Well, we get away with it. A 2-0 victory in the end. Surprised that Elsborg weren't able to find a goal in this one, but we honestly could have had more. But Panache could have had four in this match. He had four golden chances. But at least taking two of them is a good sign for him to get some confidence back. But the red card is is utterly unnecessary. He could have just passed the ball. Instead, he just randomly loses it and then tackles the guy for no reason. Oh, dear. Nevertheless, it's a good win. Back-to-back -back home victories with clean sheets in there, too. And all of a sudden, we're back. We got through the crazy tough spell and incredibly now move into a European place with that victory there. Um, it nuts that we're sitting fourth in the league in our first season of the top four. I know it's only halfway through, but we're nearly at the 30 point mark. That's kind of mental. The top three are gone. Everybody else is battling over that final European spot. I mean, surely we couldn't actually get a European spot. Just had this goalkeeper brought to me in a scout report and I'm like, okay, he looks kind of good. He's six foot eight. Six foot eight. I thought his surname was Ala Batman for a second as well. Oh, no way. He said yes. Musa Kante said yes to us. <laughs> I hope he's good now. I really do. He joins us tomorrow for £31,000. I know we can't see that much about him yet, but I'm still excited. Even his minimal attributes are still quite good. He, he's, he's, he's quite a good player. The passing of it. He's more of a playmaker, I realise. But holy God. £31,000 we signed him for on a 1.8k a week contract for four years. And he has a release course, but it's like a million quid. So either way, the club is in the money. He is an absolute baller of a player. 
<laughs> Exciting. Oh, it's a good touch from him. Whips it across. And it's... Oh, it's a... Well, the defender's been missed. And Samuel scores the goal. And it's 1-0 to Norshipping. We did not need that. This was a winnable match for us, potentially. Donizite with a chance to get us back into it. We wouldn't really deserve it, but it doesn't matter because Ludwig Svanberg in off... Well, not off the bench as a replacement for the suspended Linger gets the equaliser. And now we can hopefully build in this second period. We needed that. Definitely one of our weaker performances this season. In a game we'd expect to do well. The new boys sort of couldn't really settle in. They had just so much possession out wide and we couldn't seem to get anyone to go block them. Uh, they just weren't pressing enough, unfortunately. We were very lucky to get the point in that game, for sure. Still, it does drop us out of the European spot there, but it's another game and it's another point. And next up, we, of course, get to play against Mielby at home as well. So a good little run of fixtures for us. If we could take another win from that, suddenly it's 10 points from three and everything's looking really good for us. Literally, I've just had a team meeting with our team leaders because they're upset that I won't play an impact sub as a starting player. Play him or lose him. No, I won't. That's why he's an impact sub, chaps. Do you understanding? Well, I mean, they probably should do, right? This is not that difficult to understand. The annoying thing is, though, it ruins their morale. And it's like, why would they care if I'm playing an impact sub player? One minute to go at home. We would deserve the win if we were to somehow find a winner here. But we really do need to. Kamala, Kante now. He's got Asari in behind. It's a very, very tight angle, though, for Asari. He's got to look back inside. He finds Granite. Now there's bodies in the box. We have to find one of them. Asari. Oh, can he turn? No, he can't. Somebody's got to figure out the ball here. Granite pulls it across, and it's Kamala! Joachim Kamala, the 17-year-old, scores what could surely be the winner for Dengarforce. That is a massive moment for the young man. And there we have it. A deserved win in the end, I think. But the fact that it was Joachim Kamala, the youngster, that scores the winner for us off the bench, what a moment for the young man. Marks his, well, not his debut. He's played a few substitute appearances, but what an impact he's had there. That's huge. Moments like that can make all the difference. It sends us back into the European places into fourth spot on 32 points and 10 points now from our last four games, including a win against the top of the league side. Well, it was a clean sheet away from home. Didn't really play all that well on the night here, but it's another clean sheet. It's another point on the road. So I think it's just another point towards us having an okay season, but you'd like to think that we could have got a draw, could have win. I, I don't think we didn't play well enough at all. The confidence is still high in the team though. We're still only fifth. We're still fifth in the league after 19 games, only out of side of the European places on goal difference to EFK Jurtebol. And that's saying a lot. We play against AIK in the next match. We're fresh off of a 4-1 trashing of Kalmar. Uh, so that's not great, but we will have to see. Well, what a topsy-turvy set of fixtures we've just had. After sort of going into a tough spell and looking, not, I mean, pretty outclassed, but still giving it our, our best in some games, we've managed to really pull things back. To still be sitting fifth in the league after 19 matches is astonishing. Uh, now 19 points clear of that drop zone there uh, with, well, still plenty of 33 points still available, so plenty of that. But I just feel like every game that goes by, we're going to finish that a little bit higher in the league and right now we're 10 points clear of ninth spot top half is surely not in the bag but very very close to it and hopefully a record finish for Degaforge this season I, I still don't think we're going to get Europe I think that'd be very unlikely given that I think we finish off with the same spell of fixtures that we really struggled in against all the top sides so I think that's unlikely but I still think a record finish for Degaforge is definitely on the cards and that's our first season up really pleased with the lads if we could just score a few more goals that thank god our defense has been stellar okay so uh, tactical changes I don't think we're going to make any honestly this lineup is pretty good for me at the moment the defensive line is good Benson and then Della good. Kante and Hoodoo in the midfield have done okay. Uh, Kante's had, you know, he's been he's been average so far, but it's going to take him a little while to settle in, and I'm fine with that. But it's just really been a question of getting more goals out of that top line. Obviously, we've lost the stats for Kviskord because he went away, so that kind of has made him look worse than he has been. And Panache has actually had an XG of 6, but he's kind of hit it dead on, and I would like to have maybe he's had chances to score. I think he could have had double figures by now comfortably, and that's a shame. Anything could happen in the Swedish top flight. I believe it was Confucius that said that, right? That's something along those lines anyway. Nevertheless, a good start for us here would be lovely if we could i mean just keep this unbeaten run going we've only conceded one goal in our last five league games as well which is extremely nice to see always oh, that's short that's very short panache has knocked it down viscord has got to find the right pass he doesn't but kante does and it's donazite and it's in the back of the net and it's one nil degaforge after just four minutes the great pass from musa kante just having that extra quality of pass i think is really going to make a difference and well we saw it right there donazite has not scored scored money this season, but Chris Gord did the right thing, actually. By giving this ball to Kante, he just holds the run perfectly, and Donazite goes with a bit of class to dink over the goalkeeper, and we lead against Icor. We've been bloody excellent in this first 20 minutes. Genuinely phenomenal. Bengtsson again. Panache's in. He's got to score this time. Panache's throw. And he drills it home, and it's 2-0 to Degaforsch, and Panache, Mutian Banyoka, makes it two goals to nil, and we've deserved it. Our first 20 minutes here has been absolutely brilliant. This is phenomenal. Uh, who was this with the pick out? It was Bengtsson. Just lumps one over the top with the outside of his foot. The 
Defenders all over the shot. Panache gets it onto his left foot and he's just hammered that one. No need for any silliness there. Having as many chances as we like, but we got to make sure that we don't let our concentration slip. And it has a Sebastian Nanassi with a goal back out of nothing. Their first shot of the match. Oh, dearie me. Not what we needed at all. Out of nowhere, they're back in it. But you never know. Donizzi takes ball in. Bjorklund saved. Cleared off the line. Incredibly. Bengtsson, we probably need to restore that lead if we can do. 3-1 uh, at halftime would be very good. And now it's a red card. This is perfect. Now we can really use this possession to our advantage now with an extra man in play. And it's come through for Panache and it's 3-1. Right on the stroke of halftime, Panache, Mutin Manioka, a brace for him on the night. And it's 3-1 to Degaforsh. And surely it's game over. Can't speak too soon, though. Just a brilliant first half from the guys. I think we were unlucky to concede, honestly. But there we go. We've put ourselves in a great position for another huge win. Oh. Donizete's ball and Bjorklund. Good save. Good save again from the goalkeeper. A double stop from him. Donizete will take it. He's obviously going to aim for Linga. He's there. He's won the header and it's in off the bar. 4 1 to Degaforsh. And we are tearing them apart now. Linga's got himself in on the act and this is something else. What a team we've got going for us now. This is some quite nice football from us. A good effort. A great effort from Sebastian Nanasi. Guys, another one. They don't deserve to have scored twice, but they have. Uh, now we've got four in a match, which is very nice indeed. Out of play and that's it. Degaforsh four. Icor two. Two is a bit harsh on our defenders. I think they deserved more, but they still let them happen, didn't they? Uh, they still played very, very well. Panache with another brace to add to his tally for the season. Takes him to eight. It's good. I still want to see double figures from him this year, and I'd actually be happy if we got the double figures out of him. I think there's definitely more to come from him, but this has been one hell of a season so far because 20 games played, and we may not be in the European spots now, um, <laughs> even with that, but we're still right up there entirely and sitting in a very comfortable position right now. I'm incredibly impressed with us to have 36 points on the board after 20 matches. We really do seem to have found something now. And I think it'll still be tough, but I still think, you know, we can still get mid 40. Um, I don't know. I think we could maybe get to 50 points this year. I think that's doable for us potentially. And that would still be a hell of a record. I don't know where that would put us most seasons though, but what a run we've been on. Uh, really ever since the Malmo defeat, which I did not think we deserved, we got a brilliant win against Hecken. We got the great win against Elsewhere, which we thoroughly deserve. A couple of draws in there away from home as well, but we've really been fantastic at home. That's really been the key. Four consecutive home no, is that five? Five home wins on the bounce. Yeah, our last drop points at home were against Ustersons. Our home record this year has been unbelievable. I think that's really carried us a long way this year, and we've been fantastic, and deservedly so. So, next episode, final one of the season. You can see that we still have some winnable games in here, but it does get really tough towards the end. This run-in is going to be ridiculous, with the fact that we play 7th, 6th, 2nd, 1st, and 3rd, all in our last five matches of the season. So I think we've kind of got to be in a comfortable position before then, because I don't see us taking many points from them, to be honest. But if you have enjoyed this, and I hope you have, drop a like. That'd be lovely. Feels like a bit of a long one. Uh, it's just kind of turned out that way. If you have enjoyed it, then uh, subscribe. That'd be lovely as well. I stream on Twitch Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, so go follow there too. And I'll see you guys uh, very soon for the final episode of the season. It's going to be a massive one because you just never know where we could finish, honestly. I'm excited. I'll see you soon. Thank you so much for watching. Hold your gun. Capybara. Bye-bye.